والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعض بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم We begin with Allah's blessed name We praise Him and we glorify Him as He ought to be praised and glorified And we pray for peace and for blessings on all his noble messengers and in particular on the last of them all, the blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam as we address you there in London from the studio of the Islamic Broadcasting Network of Trinidad and Tobago and we thank them for so kindly offering their facilities for me to be able to make this broadcast to you there at the conference uh, on the art of critical thinking. I greet my fellow presenters at this conference and also you, the audience, brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The Quran, in at least a dozen in places in the Quran, has informed us that it has this book has been sent for a people لِقَوْمِ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ For a people who engage in fikr. Fikr is not just thinking, no. Fikr is pondering and reflecting, trying to get to the essence of things. It's not just the pursuit of knowledge. And the Quran has been sent لِقَوْمِ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ for a people who ponder and who reflect to seek to get to the essence of things. If we do not engage in that exercise of pondering and reflecting, critical thinking, then we pay a price. In uh, Surah Al-A'raf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses a people who live a heedless life. A people for whom the signs of Allah are constantly unfolding in the world and they pass by heedlessly. And Allah gives a warning to these people who would not think the way they ought to think. And he says, بَعْدَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ And this is Surah Al-A'raf. He says, وَلَقَدْ ذَرَأْنَ لِجَهَنَّمَ كَثِيرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ Large numbers of mankind, large numbers of the jinn are assigned to the hellfire. Why? لَهُمْ كُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا They have hearts and they do not use their hearts for pursuing knowledge. وَلَهُمْ أَعْيُنٌ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ بِهَا And they have eyes, but they do not see. وَلَهُمْ أَذَانٌ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا And they have ears, but they do not hear. These people are like cattle. أُولَئِكَ كَلَنَعَمْ Even with a PhD from MIT, and Allah says, they're just like cattle. Bal hum adal, rather they are more misguided than cattle. And so there is a relationship between true guidance, living a way of life in which you walk on sirat al-mustaqim, and the capacity to think clearly, to think critically. Ula'ika hum al these are the ones who are living a life that is heedless. And so, if we do not acquire the capacity to think critically, the price we can pay is Jahannam. There are many in the world like that today. You know them. They consider the modern feminist revolution to be something positive, to be something progressive. And what Islam has to offer concerning women and their role and status and function in society to be the opposite. 
they are a people who consider the modern secular state, the modern republican state, and that's what they are, all of them, with its constitutional secularism, with its electoral politics, participation in elections, that this is something positive, a positive development of the world, which has come from modern Western civilization. It is something progressive. And Islam's uh, Khilafah state, that's backwardness. That's the opposite. There are people who consider the modern money that we use. You know it, the British sterling pound and the US dollar, and the paper money, and plastic and electronic money, and the banking system that capitalizes on it, that this is something positive. This is a sign of progress. And Islam's dinar and dirham, who wants that? The world has no progress beyond that. That's backwardness. This is, these are signs of a people who lack the capacity to think creatively, to think critically. Does the Quran teach us how to think properly, how to think positively, how to think critically? Yes, it does. We cannot, in this brief address, uh, attempt to explain the totality of Islam's epistemology. But in subsequent lectures, inshallah, we can enlarge upon the scope of our presentation. But for today, let's go to one passage of the Quran. It came down one night. It is in Surah to Ali Imran. And the next morning in the masjid, as Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam narrated and recited what was revealed during the night, he was weeping. He was weeping. So powerful was this passage which came down in the Quran, which taught us how to think properly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins by saying, Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ard. Surely in the nature and in the constitution and creation of the parallel universes, the samawat, and the material universe, the up, there are signs for a people who ponder and reflect. Waqtilafi layli wa nahar. Surely in the alternation of night and of day, of light and of darkness, there are signs for a people who ponder and who reflect. What are these signs? Let's take one of them, only one. As we look up in the sky, we see the stars. They appear to the heedless, untrained eye and mind to be just a jumble. But Allah says, وَلَقَدْ زَيَّنَ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِمَصَابِحِ And we have surely ordained the sky, the lowest sky, with lamps. Why does he use the word lamp? A lamp is something which provides light so we can see where to go. That's what a lamp does. And these stars up there are lamps. In other words, the stars in the sky are there in order for us to know how to go, where to go. Oh yes, when you're in the sea, and you are a, on a boat in the sea, and you want to know which direction to go, you look up in the sky. The untrained eye would look at all those stars in the sky and they appear to be unrelated to each other. But the trained eye, the one who thinks and ponders and reflects, would study the stars in the sky and would see that they are all interrelated, interconnected. And as a consequence of learning the whole, seeing the whole picture, seeing how the stars are connected to each other, 
you'll be able to direct attention to direction. In which direction should I travel? And so you're able to navigate by looking up in the stars, at the stars. This is one of the signs from Allah that these stars are not placed there by accident. Proper thinking, creative thinking, critical thinking is therefore the capacity to see relationships between things in order to be able to encompass them as a totality. Creative and critical thinking does not focus on one isolated instance, one isolated event. One isolated verse of the Quran, one isolated hadith on Gog and Magog, for example. And on the basis of that one event, one instance, one verse, one hadith, you attempt to derive meaning, and you've understood now the totality? What nonsense. And precisely, it is that nonsense which has landed us in the predicament in which we are today. As we look again at the stars above, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites us to look not only at the stars, but the moon and the sun and the firmament above, and look at the furniture of the earth below, and you see that everything functions harmoniously. And everything is pregnant with truth. Allah created everything bilhaq with truth. And therefore there is harmony in all that pertains to truth. Critical thinking, the capacity to think critically, means that you must recognize harmony, lack or no defects whatsoever in all matters pertaining to what has come from Allah, the creation of the heavens and of the earth. Similarly, when you turn to the process of history, to the historical process, as truth moves through history, and you seek to interpret truth moving through history, again, you will look for harmony. You will look for that which brings a total picture into being that is meaningful and harmonious and integrated. Now you are becoming a thinker. And when you locate something which is in conflict with all the rest of what you have, something which cannot be integrated harmoniously, ah, now you understand that you may be looking at a monstrous lie parading as truth. Allah warns them in the Quran. Wala tell bil batil. Do not take truth and clothe it in the garments of falsehood. Watak to mulhaq and do not conceal the truth. Wantum ta'lamun when you know it is the truth. We will never become thinkers unless and until we develop the capacity to first of all recognize the harmony of the total data that we have pertaining to truth, and then to recognize the discrepancy, that which is inconsistent with the rest of the data, and that therefore which is a lie, that is therefore which is falsehood, dressed up as truth, and then we're able to remove falsehood and locate that which is truth, and locate that which is falsehood. The Prophet wasallam used to pray, and for those who want to think properly, to think creatively, to think critically, you got to pray. You got to make dua. You have to do it with tears in your eyes and tears in your heart. 
they may be asking for the sun and the moon and the stars and for a Mercedes-Benz motor car and for a big mansion in downtown London. But you and I ask for something else. We ask for what he, the messenger of Allah, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, prayed for and asked for. What did he ask for? He had, he said, Allahumma arini al haqqa haqqa. Oh Allah, kindly show me truth, this truth. Remove the veils from off my eyes and grant that I might recognize it as truth and follow it. And show me falsehood as falsehood. And take the veils from off my eyes and grant that I might recognize it as falsehood and reject it. And then there is the other dua. Allahumma arini al ashya kamahi. O Allah, kindly show me things as they are, that I might not be deceived by what they appear to be. And so there is a necessity for us to turn to Allah if we are to think properly. And the verse continues, the passage that came down that night, and the messenger of Allah was weeping next day. It continues to say, if you are to think creatively, if you are to think critically, if you are to be a people who ponder and who reflect and seek to reach the essence of things, then where do you start? الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَىٰ Junubihim. They are people who engage in zikr, zikr, the remembrance of Allah, while standing, while sitting, while lying on their side at all times. They are full time engaged in zikr. There is the external form of zikr. The recitation of the Quran is the greatest zikr of all. But there is that zikr which is internal in the heart, and you remember the one whom you love, in the innermost shrine of your heart, your heart will begin to shiver with that remembrance. You married her when she was just 16, and you lived with her for 60 years, and then she died. And now you're on the rocking chair there, rocking. Your grandchildren around you, talking and laughing, but you're not with them. You are with her in your heart. That's zikr. Well, the heart remembers that zikr. And the Quran asks that we must engage in zikr of Allah first before we proceed to the act of fikr. That is thinking critically, pondering and reflecting. So, الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَىٰ جُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَتَّفَكَّرُونَ Now comes the word fikr. وَيَتَّفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْكِ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ After the zikr, now they go to fikr. Over the pondering and reflecting over the creation of the heavens and of the earth, the samawat and the earth. رَبَّنَا If you use this methodology, then you come to the conclusion, Rabbana ma khalaqtaha wa batila. Nothing in this universe is false. There is no discrepancy. There is no inconsistency. There is total harmony in the universe. It is not a void. It is not something false. It is not maya. It is not an illusion. It has a reality of its own, conferred upon it by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanaka, glory be to thee, who has given us this totality with so much harmony, so much design. Protect us, save us from the fire which awaits those who disregard the harmony of the world around them, who disregard 
the meaning and implication of that harmony in the universe, which should impact upon human thought as we seek now to locate harmony in every subject that we think. The Prophet ﷺ told us that a time will come when things will not be what they appear to be. The time of Dajjal, who comes with a figure, a fire and a river. But his fire is a river, and his river is a fire. And if we lack the capacity to think critically, we'll be taken for a ride, as so many today have been taken for a ride. We'll be mis misguided. And so, to be able to think critically, you must be able to penetrate be beyond the external form of things to their internal substance, to see things as they are. And when you see that which is inconsistent, that which is in conflict with harmony and design in the universe, you know you're looking at something false. You know you're looking at something which is there as a trap for you. My teacher of blessed memory, Maulana Dr. Muhammad Fadlur Rahman Ansari Rahimahullah, gave us the methodology for the study of the Quran. If you want to pursue knowledge, where do you begin? You begin with the Quran, if you're a Muslim. If you're not a Muslim, well, then you have to determine whether or not the Qur'an is the word of the one true God. But if you are a Muslim and you already accept the Qur'an as the word of the one true God, and he who was sent to teach the Qur'an is teaching what has come from the one true God, then this is where you start for pursuing knowledge. And that's how Islamic education was built. Our children began education, formal education, with the Qur'an. And the Qur'an remained at the foundation of knowledge and of education all through life until modern Western civilization came and turned it upside down and gave us secular education and gave us a people who are like cattle without the capacity to think critically and therefore to accept the bogus claim <laughs> that the Syrian government which is now on the upper hand against the, uh, the Saudi-funded and Saudi-armed uh, insurrectionists in Syria acting and dancing on Dajjal's behalf to, to overthrow the government of Syria. And Imran Hussein, don't come with that nonsense. Imran Hussein is not a supporter of any government in the world, in, in any government in the world of Islam. Give me the evidence that I've ever supported any government. Come on, give it to me. So when I condemn those who are uh, uh, acting on Dajjal's behalf to attempt to overthrow the Libyan government so that NATO could take over in Libya, I'm on the right path. I'm doing what is correct. These are people who lack the capacity to think creatively, to think critically. And so they're misguided. And they're dancing to every drum beat that comes from Dajjal. And they accept the Syrian government did the chemical attack. And so the world has a right to intervene and punish Syria. Where is the evidence? Where is the evidence? Before we end, one more warning from the Quran concerning thinking. In Surah Al-Hujurat, there's a warning, a mother of all warnings. The Prophet ﷺ had said that in Akhir zaman there will be great liars. In Akhiru Zaman, there will be great liars. So beware. That's what you have in the media today. Sophisticated lies. That's why I don't have a television set. I don't watch television. No. There's a television set in my home in Trinidad. It's turned off. Can't be turned on. Where I live in Malaysia, there is no television set. No. I don't read. I don't read this rubbish and listen to this rubbish because it pollutes the mind. He said that in Akhir Zaman there'll be great liars, so beware. And that's what they did in 9-11. There are normal lies and there are great lies and there's 9-11. How many scholars of Islam dare to stand up and say that? And now let's turn to Surah Al-Hujurat of the Quran before we end. The mother of all warnings. 
for a people who would think critically. Ya ayyuha allatheena amanu o you who have faith in Allah. Idha ja'akum fasikun bi naba'in fatabayyanu an tusibu qawman bi jahalatin fatusbihu ala ma fa'altum nadimin. When news comes to you from a source which is fasik, and that's the media today, that's your television today, fasik, sinful, unreliable. When news comes to you from sources like that, be careful to investigate that news, lest you accept it and blame someone who is innocent and then subsequently regret what you have done. We all make mistakes by uncritically accepting what is dished out to us as information and news. But after this conference, it must stop. You and I, the message is not only to you, the message is to me as well, and to all the participants and all the speakers. From this day on, we must exercise great care and great caution to investigate every single news which comes to us from those unreliable sources so that we can be able to reach to the truth of things and not be deceived and blame people who are innocent of wrongdoing. The Syrian government didn't do it. Obviously, Mr. Putin has more sense in his head than all the other leaders, so-called leaders, who are saying it's the Syrian government that did it, the chemical attack that killed 1,000 people or more. Who did it? On judgment day, we'll know who did it. And on that day, we will be uh, able to, to, to say we were correct in what we said. And then you know who are the ones who really did it. Who are the ones who did 9-11? Who are the ones who are the greatest terrorists in the world today? And yet, <laughs> fighting war on terror. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala May help us as we seek to become a people who think and who ponder and who reflect and who seek to achieve the reality of things, to see things and to understand and to know things as they are and not to be deceived by what they appear to be. May Allah bless you all. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته